In Europe, a never talked about genocide happened in the late 90s. It was committed by NATO troops led by the United States and Albanian nationalists, and its target were Orthodox Christian Serbs. It was the genocide of the indigenous Serbian population of Kosovo. But like with most political events, and especially events happening in the Balkans, to truly understand this horrific situation, we need to go back in history, actually rather far back. Both the Albanian and Serbian side claims to have a greater territorial claim to Kosovo. So let's find out which one of these two groups inhabited the region first. Now, one Albanian claim that you might have heard if you follow the horrible Albanian pop singer Dua Lipa on Twitter is that Albanians are the only descendants of the Illyrians still living in the Balkans and that Serbs are merely recent Slavic colonizers. For the sake of context, the Illyrians being an ancient group of people who have been recorded to having inhabited the Balkans since before the Romans. And I do understand how you might get this idea that Albanians are more closely related to the Illyrians, considering that the Albanian language is most likely a direct descendant of the Illyrian language. But according to genetic studies, Serbs actually have more Proto-Balkan DNA in them than Albanians have, the haplogroup in question being I2. Now, how can this be, considering that it is common knowledge that Slavic people, Serbs obviously being Slavs, first conquered the Balkans in the 7th century? Well, the answer to this question is quite simple. The native Illyrians just simply started speaking Slavic languages. And while this might seem strange at first, this has happened many times before. The Illyrian language, and therefore also Albanian, was itself adopted by people who spoke non-Indo-European languages before that. For what it's worth, the same thing happened here in Latin America. The average Peruvian has far more in common with Cusco than they have with El Soro for for exactly the same reason. So the practice of adopting the elite's language is quite common. So in other words, no. Dua Lipa's irredentist claims don't hold any water, and in fact, Albanians have less Illyrian DNA in them than the average Serb because of Albania's quite strategic position. So, now that the claim that one side is more indigenous than the other has been settled, let's move on to more recent history. After the fall of the West Roman Empire, Kosovo was a battleground between various factions, but was mainly ruled by Serbs and Byzantine Greeks. During this period, it is impossible to determine which group lived in Kosovo, but it is obvious that both Albanians and Serbs had a presence in the region. Judging from names and documents from the 12th century, Kosovo had a mixture of Albanian-speaking people and Serbian-speaking inhabitants. The first identifiably Albanian name, for example, comes from a statement made by the Serbian ruler of Kosovo, Miroslav, in 1253. Serbian and Albanian sources naturally both argue that their own ethnicity was the majority at this point, but it is fair to conclude that both parties were a sizable chunk of the population, with Serbs making up the majority. The reason why I say this, with some level of certainty, and also why this population makeup is about to change drastically is because of my least favored overpowered EU4 country. The Muslim Ottoman Empire conquered Kosovo in 1455, and according to its own population census from that same year, 96% of names were of Slavic origin in Kosovo, but again, the demographic landscape of Kosovo was about to change drastically. Under Ottoman rule, the indigenous Christians were subject to legal kidnappings of their sons and higher tax rates called jizya. This policy was part of a strategy of discrimination that had the aim of forcing poor Christians to convert to Islam. But despite this policy, not many Serbs were willing to convert to the religion of their Muslim colonizers. Sadly for the rest of Europe at the time, many Albanians, however, were willing to convert, which is honestly strange considering that Albanians under the heroic leadership of Skanderbeg, an Ottoman army general turned rebel, had put up some of the fiercest resistance against the Ottoman Muslim Turks. However, it has been theorized that it's exactly because of this reason that the Ottoman Turks wanted to convert the Albanians, since the Albanians were primarily Catholics and therefore far more likely to organize with the rest of Europe's major powers, while Serbs, on the other hand, were Orthodox Christians. As Muslim rule and its discriminatory practices continued, many Christians, in other words mainly Serbs, started to leave. So many in fact started to leave that this exodus is known as the Great Exodus of Serbs. And who do you think the Ottoman Empire wanted to replace these departing Serbs with? With the more loyal Albanian Muslims, whose immigration into Kosovo was strongly promoted by the colonial Ottoman authorities. This meant that according to an Austrian census from 1890, Muslim Albanians made up 70% of the population with Serbs now only making up 30% of the population. So going from 96% Serbs, even if overstated, to 30% Serbs is a clear sign of ethnic cleansing, genocide, and every other no-no word that'll get me demonetized on YouTube. Because of the high Albanian birth rate, the Serbian population of Kosovo further decreased to only 13% by the beginning of the Yugoslav War. <laughs> 
i 30 godina ovo potpuno bio etnički čist prostor. Znači da su sve Srbi bili sa strane, ali svetskom politikom i politikom nasilja od strane Albanaca, naši ljudi su napustili ove prostore i otišli po Srbiji gore. That's our lesson on the early demographic history of Kosovo. And from that we can conclude that Serbians in no way have less historical rights to Kosovo and that their claim in fact is far stronger than for example the Israeli claim to Israel. Okay, so now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's move on to the real meat of the video, the Yugoslav Wars and the NATO-supported genocide of Serbs, which happened the year I was born in fact, in 1999. I'm gonna do a big leap forward in time now to the death of the dictator Joseph Tito that ruled over Croatia, Serbia, Bosnia, Slovenia, Montenegro, North Macedonia, and Kosovo under the unified name of Yugoslavia. So, if you want some extra context, I highly encourage reading up on Yugoslav history. Nonetheless, after Joseph Tito's death in 1980, the multi-ethnic and federal state of Yugoslavia that had been held together by Tito's strong rule started to crumble, culminating in the different ethnic groups' respective federal states called republics seceding and the Yugoslav war between said republics starting in 1991. The many reasons behind the this collapse and subsequent war has many facets and has been covered in many documentaries. However, one reason that usually isn't covered in great length is that the Serb-controlled rump state of Yugoslavia fought as hard as it did not because of some grandiose lust for world domination, but instead because its own ethnic group was held hostage by the seceding Croatian and Bosniak states, whose borders were not fit for being independent states since they didn't accurately represent the historical or ethnic divisions but were merely administrative divisions of a larger state, Yugoslavia. Imagine if some American state seceded from the Union because of some ethnic or religious reason, likely all the areas of these states that didn't agree with that idea would want to be able to choose for themselves. Now, of course, the Serbs themselves were by no means saints either, which is best represented by absolute bangers such as this one. But nonetheless, the reason why Serbia was fighting was because the Yugoslavian administrative divisions had devolved into becoming the already mentioned nation states which didn't properly represent where Serbs actually lived. Until then this hadn't been a problem since Joseph Tito's Yugoslavia had tried to keep an ethnic status quo across the entire country, but now Serbs found themselves in a very precarious position. Christian Serbs were almost half the population of Bosnia, a region that was historically Serbian as well but was dominated by a Muslim political elite and also a large and historically very mistreated element of Catholic Croatia as well, having been subjected to many brutal and senseless massacres by the Croatian Ustasha during World War II in particular. These massacres, in fact, were so violent that even the German and Italian authorities present in the area many times had to protect Serbians against attacks from the Croatian government. So therefore, what was Serbia supposed to do? Well, honestly, this entire conflict and all its suffering could have been avoided if the parties had simply acted like adults and therefore agreed to redraw the nation state's borders along ethnic lines and done some minor population resettlements. But because of many geopolitical factors like the fact that Serbia wasn't interested in becoming a pro-Western nation and aligned closer with Russia because of religious and historical ties and because humans are generally a degenerate and horrible species in no way worthy of our place on the planet, this of course didn't happen and instead the main part of the Yugoslav war known as the Bosnian war commenced. It was a brutal and chaotic war rivaling the conflict in for example Syria where all sides committed horrible crimes against each other. The Bosnian part of the Yugoslav war came to an end when NATO decided decided that protecting national sovereignty borders and the rule of law was necessary and therefore in an undoubtedly completely humanitarian and self-sacrificial act intervened on the behalf of the most pro-Western groups, that being Bosnian Muslims and Croatia, to ensure that the horrible and evil Serbs could no longer oppress them by seceding from their own secessionist state. Because as previously mentioned, upholding internationally recognized borders is very important for NATO, except of course Yugoslavia's borders and laws, like the fact that Bosnian and Croatian Serbs had a legal right right to secede from the state of Croatia and Bosnia since the Yugoslavian constitution as stated many times by the Serbian president gives the right of self-determination to nations such as Muslim Bosniaks and Bosnian Serbs not to the republics that meaning the federal states. Federal states being administrative entities like the Republic of Serbia or Bosnia Herzegovina. But nonetheless it's nice to know that NATO deeply cares about protecting minorities and upholding national borders and I really want you to remember that as we enter the most hypocritical part of this tragedy, the war in Kosovo.
During the time of Yugoslavia, Kosovo wasn't even a member Republic of Yugoslavia, but merely an autonomous region inside the Republic of Serbia. And because of this larger level of Serbian control over Kosovo, any attempt by the Albanian majority to declare the autonomous region an independent republic were swiftly crushed by the central Serbian government, since an independent Kosovo would likely mean at the very least that the indigenous Serbian Christian population would be harassed and suppressed, if not worse, by the Albanian majority, a fear that would very soon be proven very well founded. So, because of this tighter Serbian grip on power, the Kosovar part of the Yugoslav War didn't start until 1995 in the shape of a relatively low-intensity Albanian nationalist insurgency. But as the war in Bosnia came to a dramatic end in 1996, the main Albanian separatist group, the Kosovo Liberation Army, usually called the KLA, likely emboldened by the success of their fellow Muslims in Bosnia, and because of German and CIA support, the KLA started intensifying the insurgency by attacking police stations, killing Serbian government workers, and Serb civilians. Yes, the Western government trend of supporting totalitarian and genocidal Islamic movements against religious minorities did not start in Syria. Kosovska bitka nije značajna samo za Srbiju. Ona je značajna i za Engleze, i za Francuze, i za Nemačku. Znači, Islam je bio taj koji je hteo da potisne, da potisne celo hrišćanstvo. Ovo je sveta srpska zemlja ovde. Ko bi pustio? Mi svi da izginemo iz ovog sela, mi neće da pustimo. Kad budemo izginuli svi, onda ćemo pustiti na gledoće dana. Pa to se desilo tog jutra, je javljeno da su srpske porodice koje u manjini žive, desetak porodica u tom selu, kraj peći, na domak peći, dva, tri kilometra. Javili su da su opkoljeni, da su pod vatrom, da im treba pomoć. Međutim, Sticajem okolnosti, deja se nalazi u jednom blindiranom vozilu koje je popustilo pod jednom granatom rušnog vacača. Tako da su u tom vozilu poginula dva policajica i pet teško ranjenih. Especially the German BND was instrumental in transforming the small force of around 200 KLA fighters into a far larger and more effective force, which is funny considering that portraying Hitler's national socialism in a positive light is banned in Germany, but apparently doing the exact same thing as Hitler did by arming a militia hell-bent on exterminating Serbs for pragmatic geopolitical interests and purposes is perfectly fine and dandy, LARPing with swastikas, banned, actually acting like Hitler, fine. And exterminating the KLA did. As an example, when the KLA briefly captured the town of Orahovac, they kidnapped 85 Serbian civilian men, women and children hiding from the Albanians in Sosiste monastery, murdering 40 of them before releasing the rest. It should be said that the monks of the monastery bravely defended the civilians with only four rifles for two hours before running out of ammunition. The CIA and German-supported Albanian KLA even operated up to five concentration camps for Serbs in Kosovo. But naturally, almost no one was punished for this with the exception of a guard called Haradin Bala, who together with two other guards, according to the International Criminal Tribunal, for the former Yugoslavia murdered nine prisoners in the La... Pujnik prison camp. Okay, guys, come on. What happened to the other two guards? Well, they were acquitted. So, well, it's fine to hunt down a 100-year-old babushka for stuff that happened in World War II. Apparently, it's all island vibes when it comes to a 20-year-old conflict. But not only did the KLA perform poorly from a human rights perspective, it also performed poorly in combat, losing every single battle despite Western government support, likely rivaling the late Afghan army as the most incompetent Western-supported force. Because of this Albanian failure on the battlefield, the West suddenly decided to care about Albanian human rights and started a humanitarian bombing campaign of Serbian population centers by claiming that the Serbian government had some kind of Laban Rounds tier plan in mind called Operation Horseshoe, which was somehow magically acquired by German intelligence. Yes, the same guys who were supporting the KLA and also yes, to this day no actual evidence of the plan's existence has ever been produced.
NATO called the glorious humanitarian bombing campaign of Serbia Operation Allied Force, destroying important genocidal tools of the Serbian regime like bridges across the Danube, factories, power stations, telecommunication facilities, the headquarters of the Yugoslav left, a political party closely related to the Serbian president, and the Avala TV tower. Some communist fascists protested and claimed that these actions were violations of international law and the Geneva Convention. NATO argued that these facilities were potentially useful to the Yugoslavian military and thus their bombing was justified. Okay. Whenever a NATO country gets bombed, I'm going to say the same. Let's see how long it takes for me to get banned. By the end of the bombing campaign, 530 civilians and 300 police officers had been killed by NATO. When confronted with these statistics, the NATO spokesman, who is hopefully being given a taste of karma in the afterlife right now, answered, There's always a cost to defeat evil. It never comes free. NATO also accidentally bombed the Chinese embassy in the middle of Belgrade, the capital of Yugoslavia. The bombing campaign first ended when Serbian president at the time, Slobodan Milosevic, made the huge mistake of signing the Kumanovo Agreement with NATO, which sounded okay on paper, but in reality was simply a Trojan horse for complete Albanian nationalist control over Kosovo and likely contributed to Slobodan Milosevic later being overthrown and tried for war crimes, something not a single NATO soldier was tried for. So now that Kosovo was completely under KLA control and supported by NATO, can you after listening to my incredibly intellectual video, guess what happened next? Well, genocide happened, but this time it happened to European Christians who have an ideology and a geopolitical position that doesn't align with the West, so it's okay. Firstly, over 150 Serbian religious sites have been destroyed, about half of them dating back to at least the 15th or 14th century. The indigenous Serbian population of Kosovo has been more than halved, now making up only 4% of the total population and is being oppressed by the Muslim Albanian majority creating regular flares of unrest. So in total today, Serbs are now a disenfranchised and token majority in a state completely dominated by ethnic Albanian nationalists constantly wanting to unify with Albania province. On a slightly hilarious note, however, in 2001, the KLA, emboldened by their victory in Kosovo, decided to try to implement their true agenda, Dua Lipa's own Greater Albania, by trying to start an Albanian insurgency in neighboring northern Macedonia. NATO, however, didn't view Northern Macedonia as a geopolitical threat and therefore showed as much interest in the supposed plight of ethnic Albanians there as the American government shows in the plight of their own white working class. So without foreign intervention, the KLA as always showed its own complete military incompetency and was completely wiped out. And just to be clear, NATO was always aware of the KLA's true goals, so there is no way that NATO can act surprised. In July 1998, in an interview for Der Spiegel, Jakub Krasniki publicly announced that the KLA's goal was the unification of all Albanian inhabited lands. It is truly almost fascinating how the West and its supporters can claim the moral upper hand at every turn despite these types of complete double standards. And this isn't even the worst one. The entire invasion of Kosovo itself is a huge hypocrisy since NATO had literally the year before fought another war against Serbia to prevent Serbs in Bosnia from achieving exactly the same thing as what Albanians in Kosovo wanted, simply self-determination. And on this note, I do wish to be clear, I truly do believe that Albanians in Kosovo deserved self-determination, just as Serbs in Bosnia and Croatia deserved self-determination. But Kosovo Albanian self-determination shouldn't have included the entire region, but obviously only the Kosovo Albanian areas, who would most likely have united with the rest of Albania. With the current situation, however, no one except for NATO really wins. Kosovo Albanians get an artificial state that is not sustainable from neither a strategic nor historical perspective and that is entirely dependent on NATO support for its survival. Kosovo Serbs get their entire heritage destroyed and is now living as a reduced and hated minority in their indigenous homeland. But the reason why NATO wins on the other hand is because it essentially has an aircraft carrier right next to Russia's only true ally in the area and has denied Serbia a significant amount of land. The United States president at the time even himself acknowledged how unfair and badly the Serbs were being treated. On the 14th of April 1999, at a meeting initiated by the White House with representatives of the Serbian American community, President Bill Clinton had stated that the provisions for allowing a referendum for the Albanians in Kosovo went too far and that if he were in the shoes of Milosevic, he probably wouldn't have signed the agreement either. 
So it is obvious that the Serbs never had a way out other than total surrender and allowing their own population to be genocided under NATO supervision. NATO was never truly interested in peace but solely further weakening its rivals from the Cold War, that being Yugoslavia and Russia, with the Serbs being collateral damage just like what happened in Iraq, Syria, South America, Central America, Ukraine, Libya and likely another country very soon. On this somber note, I wish to end the video by asking you to remember the lessons given here and share the video with everyone you know since it's the only way it's going to get attention and enlighten people to the realities that the Western media doesn't want to tell you about. I would truly like to thank my patrons Justin and Nazbul who really helped me by aiding me in paying my bills so I can focus on making videos on this channel. Please consider giving any amount on Patreon since it makes a huge difference and if that isn't possible then again please share my videos everywhere you can. I'm also making a second channel where I'm uploading exactly the same things as here. It's going to be called Post Tenebras 2 since drum roll please. I'm changing the name of both channels to Post Tenebras, not one, just Post Tenebras, since I wanted a channel name with a bit more meaning. Next video should be coming up very soon, and it's going to be about a man whose story has truly and honestly fascinated me. Thank you so much for your time, and see you all very soon. Thank you.